All right, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, did you have fun at the at the party last night? Oh yeah. <laughs> Just one person in. All right. Albert Einstein said, "Try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value." So many people pursue success, you know, uh, and I think he's well. Obviously, he's uh, an incredible figure, very smart. Uh, in that spirit, um, the purpose of the presentation today is to try to wrap as much value as we can so that, um, um, so that we can become faster with WordPress. Um, three ways in which I would like to deliver value this morning is uh, becoming faster, so that by doing things faster with WordPress, with the command line, um, we, we're just uh, saving the most important thing that uh, we have, which is time. You can spend it however you want. You can spend it with your family. You can spend it in other projects. Second one would be become more valuable. Uh, you can become more valuable to your employer, whether that employer is your end client because you have your own company, your own business, and so they are employing you. You become more valuable because you have more tools. Uh, or you are an employee for someone, and because you have like this th new techniques, you can even share them with your uh, coworkers and whatnot. Uh, also, become fearless. Uh, when I first started with the command line, um, I was a little fearful because you can break the whole thing. Like the the computer can completely, you know, stop working. Um, and it's like a chainsaw. When you see the, a chainsaw for the first time being used by someone else, you go like, oh my gosh, this thing is powerful, <laughs> right? And the immediate reaction of a, normal, of a normal person is to be fearful because there's so much power, you can cut your leg off. But at the same time, the power is what makes it so compelling as a tool. Uh, what makes you want to use a chainsaw uh, is that you bypass that fear and that bypassing happens because you train yourself. You become more comfortable with the tool. You start using it maybe to cut a little limb first. And then you start getting into the ladders and the whole thing. I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen some of those YouTube videos where uh, I recommend you guys check them out. Uh, not right now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, people get on ladders, really tall ladders, and then with the chainsaw, they start cutting the limbs. And uh, yeah, anyways, check, check those out. Um, so those are the three ways to provide value this morning. Become faster become more valuable, and become fearless. So, with that in mind, if I could share with you guys something in a few minutes that could save you hours, would that be valuable to you? Yes. <laughs> right? It's almost like I am giving you money this morning. Because technically, if I save you time, I'll be saving you money. Um, Adam, yesterday was talking about you, you, want away, you want to move away from this concept of charging by the hour. So what I'm going to talk about today makes no sense with that model because if you charge by the hour and you're saving time, then you're undercharging yourself, right? You're, you're getting less money even more. So the concept is let's move away from charging by the hour into uh, charging because you guys are worth it, all right? Um, my name is Alex Centeno. I'm a husband, father, and son. I'm also the director of digital at Andy Sites. Um, and I have about uh, 15 years or so experience building websites, uh, some experience with a uh, little bit of Joomla, a little bit of Drupal, a little bit of other weird off the beaten path things. Uh, HTML by itself. I mean, I've, I've done several things and, uh, and uh, finally arrived at WordPress, which I, of course, love. So. And finally, I am an allergy sufferer, and I'm pretty sure you guys probably also can relate to that. Uh, how many of you have spring allergies? Yeah, exactly, exactly. My wife actually has um, the fall allergies, so she does a lot better now. So I'll be, at, at the end of the year, I'll be the one laughing anyways. All right. Our agenda for today, get familiar with the command line. So some introduction to the command line. 
Uh, have you ever used the command line? All right, so you guys are familiar. We're going to do that very quickly. Uh, then introduction to WPCLI, which is WordPress on the command line, and then give some examples. Does that sound like a good plan? All right. We're going to be using Bash. According to Wikipedia, Bash is a Unix shell. It's a command language written by Brian Fox, and it's a command processor that typically runs in a text window. So no big deal, no bells and whistles, no GUI, uh, just text window. And you enter some commands, and something happens. So pretty much it's the simplest way that you can get something accomplished in a computer is with the command line. We're going to be using Bash, which is the default logging shell for most Linux distributions. WordPress, uh, for the most part, always is installed in a LAMP system or a Linux uh, server. So we're going to be using Bash, which you could be using by connecting to an SSH uh, via SSH to a server anytime. Um, and also is the default login for Mac OS uh, as well. Windows 10 users, um, if you like PCs, I recommend um, I was going to make a joke, but I'm not, I'm not going. Windows 10 can actually install the developer tools and includes Bash now uh, on your machine without having to install any, any extra extensions and whatnot. Uh, Microsoft came up with this um, relationship with Canonical, which are the people behind Ubuntu, uh, a Linux distribution. And so now you just go to your developer tools, you enable Bash, and you can be working with the same commands that you'll be working on a Linux server, which is very convenient. Um, and just for the purpose of my demonstration, I won't be using the terminal that is the default in a, in a Mac. I'll be using a software called iTerm2, which basically is just coloring a little bit better, but it's still a text window. So uh, nothing uh, really uh, different there. If you have a Mac, I recommend downloading iTerm2. It's, it's free to download on the web. All right. So um, this is the convention of how um, command in, the, in Bash would look like. Uh, the dollar sign is the convention for saying, hey, I'm going to write a command. So you would, when you see something like this, you wouldn't type the uh, dollar sign. And then we have the name of the command followed by some flags or some modifiers for that command followed by the arguments. Or what are we going to be affecting with this command? So command dash flags space uh, and then um, uh, the arguments. So that's, that's it. That's the chainsaw moment. Bye-bye. All right, the most used commands. Uh, we have ls for listing. We have change directory or cd. We have move to rename files and to move them, move folders as well. We have SSH to connect to remote servers. We have uh, curl to download some information from the web from different files. We have change ownership, change mode to change the permissions of files and folders, etc. We're going to take a look at some of those in a live demo. Hopefully, everything goes well. Because you know how it is with demos, right? Sometimes they just. All right, demo time, bill number one. Um, so we are probably familiar with a concept that goes something like this. Hey, Alex, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, buddy. How's it going? Good, good, good. Um, hey, I have a cousin, and he needs a website. And he has this company, and uh, he's making lots of money, and he needs this website and he asked me if I knew someone that knew about web design and all this stuff and I immediately said absolutely I have the guy for you uh, I told him about Brian but he couldn't do it so I'm calling you to see if like you know you could help the guy so um, his name is Bill can you give him a call so you give Bill a call hey Bill how's it going this is Alex oh yeah 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 Alex uh, the web designer right yes yes um, I need a website. And uh, this is very simple. A heading, two paragraphs. I could do it in Wix. Everybody can do it. Like anybody in the whole world can do this. Um, I was hoping that we could do it for 150 bucks. It's just, you know, like the heading and two paragraphs, you know, no big deal. What do you think? So you end up saying, like, oh my gosh, you know, like you're in this situation one more time. Uh, has that happened to you guys, or you, you don't relate at all? Has, 
If you've been a designer or a developer for seven seconds, this is it. This is what people approach you with all the time, right? So um, you say, I'm not going to do this. You, you internally say, I'm not going to do this. But then externally you say, I'm going to do this. Why? Because he is the friend of, uh, he's the cousin of your friend. And so you end up saying, OK, Bill, I'm going to do this one time. Uh, I shouldn't be doing this, but uh, I'm going to do this, right? Let's go ahead and build a website for Bill from the command line. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, you, you ask Bill, hey, can you send me your logo and you know, any assets that you have by now? And he says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, I spend like a, a, a thousand, $2,000 in the logo. That's why I don't have any money for the website. So, uh, so he gives you uh, the information about his business. Pollen Blow is his business. Um, and he says, um, yeah, the, the tagline is Sinus. Sinus. Do you, do you get it? Do you get it? <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Okay, Bill. Pollen blow. So what they do is they blow the pollen. Um, people don't like it. We do pollen blow. All right. Here we go. That didn't sound good. There we go. All right. We're at the command line here. And um, I conveniently crea created a folder called WordCamp for us. And uh, two things are happening right now, which stand for the dollar sign that we saw before. The first one is the username. In my case, it's Alex Centeno in the blue. And then in the gray, we have the actual present working do directory. Present working directory. So the location where we're at. All right, ls to list. That's going to list the different folders and files that we have in this folder. If I do some flags, in this case I'm going to do AL for hidden and long form. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, that's going to also show me the hidden files and uh, some extra information in long form. So it gives me, uh, from left to right, it gives me uh, the first letter says directory. So. Uh, when you see a D, it's a directory, OS, it's a file with a dash. Then the permissions for the owner of the file. Uh, then we have uh, the permissions for the group, the next three. And then the permissions for the world or everybody else. We have a space uh, with the number of links inside of that folder. We have the owner and group. We have the um, the size of the file. In fact, let's go ahead and do this with ALFH so that it's human readable a little bit better. So it gives us those uh, file sizes a little bit easier to read. Uh, it gives us the last modified time of this file or folder and uh, the name of the file or folder. Dot means this uh, folder. Dot dot means the parent of this folder. And every time that you see a file with a dot in the front, it's going to be a hidden file. So that's why you don't see it by default. Uh, this is just a regular representation of what you see in a, in a regular folder. All right. So if I go to my Mac here, and I go to that folder, this is what you see. A folder called test x1. And if I go back, then that's basically what I have, a folder called test x1, but nothing else. Everything else is just hidden. Let's go ahead and create a folder, make directory, mkdir, for bill, pollen blow. ls, now we have two folders, one pollen blow, one test x1. Let's go ahead and change directories to go into pollen blow, cd, change directory, pollen blow. And let's clear our screen because it's starting to get a little bit uh, messy in there, so clear to clear the screen. All right, ls. Nothing inside. Nothing inside of the column blow. All right, let's go ahead and create an index.html, right? With touch. Index.html. ls. Now we have an index.html file in there. To open that file with my default text editor, in my case it's sublime text, and you can use whatever uh, you prefer, open-t index.html. 
that's going to open Sublime Text for me. I'm going to enter some basic HTML here. Pollen blow. I'm going to enter his heading and the two paragraphs with Laura Mipson in there. All right, save this, close. Let's close this too. Let's go to my Firefox. Um, and I, ahead of time, I set up pollenblow.alx as a domain that I can use in my machine, but you would be working in the server, so this would be already set up for you. Uh, so um, I have a server running on my machine for, for the demonstration here. All right, so that's the website that he wanted. He just wanted the heading. He just wanted two paragraphs. You call Bill. Hey, Bill. Um, 150 bucks. You can put the check in that in the mail. We're good to go. Thank you so much. Hey, Alex. Every time that you hear on the phone or on the email when they start with the word "hey," <laughs> it's not good. Okay. I'm going to give you that tip. If you can take anything from this presentation, is that if they start with "hey," comma, it's terrible. So, hey, Alex. Um, I failed to probably say this when we had our first conversation. Um, I didn't exactly mean just one heading and a couple paragraphs. I was, you know, it's one of those things, white, it's, it's so web 2000. Let's go ahead and uh, if you don't mind putting like a background in gray and just uh, the letters in white, that's all I want, really. It's, it's not a big deal. I mean, you've heard of the style sheets, right? Yes, I have. Um, I'll go ahead and do that change for you, Bill. All right, so we go back to our command line here, ls, and we're going to create a style.css file, which, of course, you guys know already. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, well. Is the audio system? Hello? One, two? You guys can hear me anyways, right? All right. Yeah, you're good to go now. OK, perfect. Um, so you guys know how to create uh, a file now. Um, it would be touch, the style, dot CSS. LS to list. Now there's in style dot CSS. Let's open that file, style dot CSS. There we go. Let's add some CSS in there. I'm going to do a background of gray and a color of white. Right? Save, close, refresh. Uh, there's a wrapper in there. That's why I didn't do it, right? Let's go ahead and open index.html. Div wrapper. Save. And hopefully, there we go. Bill, how are you doing, buddy? I hope you're doing great. Um, your website is done. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this project very much. You're great. Hey, Alex. Um, I was hoping, just, uh, you know, I was talking to my wife, and uh, she said, from side to side is terrible. We, we need a container. We, we just, <laughs> all right, Bill. Let's do the container. Let's do the container. All right, let's go ahead and go to our style.css file and give him the container to be done with this project, which now is not uh, feeling like such a good idea anymore. All right, let's refresh this. Bill, <laughs> there's the container. Are we good? Please. Alex, I'm so sorry. Hey, listen. Um, I didn't think about this, but allergies are different in the spring than they're in the fall. And talking to my clients, they want me to change those two paragraphs every so often. So when I'm in the spring, I type stuff about uh, the spring allergies. And in the fall, I do the same. I was wondering for maybe another 10, 20 bucks if you could put like a username and password in there so that I can just change those two, two paragraphs. I mean, 
you can do that on Wix. So could you do that for me? So anyways, now you're like, oh my gosh. He says to you, like, Alex, you probably hate me now. You, you hate me. You go like, I don't hate you, Bill. I don't hate you. <laughs> um, by now, you're already thinking, I should have started with WordPress, right? Because I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and spend another 10 minutes or 20 minutes trying to just code a username and password screen for those changes, right? So let's go ahead and uh, install WordPress for this guy. So ls to list. I'm going to remove a file, rm index.html. That removed my file. Let's go ahead and remove the folder altogether. So I'm going to do cd to change directory, dot, dot, to go to the parent. I want you to see that I go from pollen blow to the one before, ls. I'm, pulling, uh, I'm now at work camp. I'm going to remove with flags RF for uh, removing a directory. And now it's gone. All right? Let's go ahead and install WordPress. Now, you could be tempted at this point to go to WordPress.org, download the latest version, set up your environment, etc. WordPress is legendary for the five minute install, right? So that's pretty good already. It would take us five minutes probably. And for, for someone who's familiar, maybe a little bit less. Uh, let's go ahead and install it from the command line. I have a script here. And again, all these scripts that I'm going to be using uh, are going to be available after the talk. So if you guys want to download them, like you're, you'll be welcome to. Um, Fresh-wp is going to ask me, what name do you want to give this? I'm going to say pollen blow. There you go, and hit enter. Let's count how long it takes. It's going to go to WordPress.org, download the latest version. If I already have a cache version, it does it from my machine. It generates the database. It installs WordPress for me with some defaults. And I'm just going to go now to the website, and it's done. All right? So I have WordPress installed in what? Seven seconds, maybe, maybe, maybe less. Let's go ahead and do a couple of things for him, because I know that he's not going to be a happy camper if I just do that. I'm going to do CP for copy. Uh, he sent me the banner. I put it in my desktop and called it banner. So CP, uh, so copy the banner that I have on my desktop and put it in the header, which is in the theme 2017. Hit enter. Oh, actually, I have to get into pollen blow. So CD pollen blow. And let's do that CP. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. There you go. Excellent. Now, I'm seeing here that the defaults did a title that is kind of together there. He's not going to like that. Let's do WP option. And let's change the blog name to pollen below. Let's do WP option, update, blog description, and change that to sinus. Let's take a look. And again, I could have gone inside in uh, WP admin, log with my username and password, go to settings, uh, title, and uh, so on. But now it's done. Um, He's not going to like the fact that it only has a hello world. He's going to call me, or, or he's going to talk and say, hey, Alex, um, can you do some example posts? So let's go ahead and do that. WP post list is going to give me a, a list of the posts that are available in a conveniently uh, presented table. It has, it has a column of ID, post title, the post name, post date, and the status of that particular post. And if you have more than one post, it's going to do all those posts uh, for you. Let's go ahead and create some for him. Uh, if we use curl, it's going to go to a website and bring that website back. In this case, I'm going to use a Lorem Ipsum website, which is called lorepsum.net slash API. And then after the API thing, you just uh, give it a number of paragraphs. And this is going to generate a given number of uh, paragraphs for you. Curl. So I'm going to do that, and it's going to come back with those two paragraphs of Laura Mipson. I can do as many paragraphs as I want by that number after the API. 
Um, so I'm going to use this, and I'm going to pass it with a pipe. I'm going to pass it to WP post generate, and I'm going to pass it as the post content. And then I'm going to say count equal 4. I could do 20. I could do 100. With this kind of speed, you can just very quickly just generate a, a WordPress website to see how 100 websites are uh, behaving in a theme, for example. It's, it, you, once you're done, you just remove it. OK? So let's go ahead and do 4 for him. That goes and generates those uh, posts, WP post list. Now we have all those posts ready. And if we take a look, they have lorem ipsum as well. If you were to do this manually, it would take a long time. But now we have all those posts ready for him. Let's go ahead and change it, because I know that he's not going to like those post titles. So let's go ahead and do that, WP post update. We're going to update post number three. And we're going to call it post title. We're going to call it about us. All right. WP post update number four. Let's go ahead and call that one contact us. If I do up with my scroll, with my um, uh, keys, up actually retrieves my last command, so I don't have to type it again. Uh, let's go ahead and change this one, uh, number five, to post title resources. And let's take a look at the list, WP post list. All right, so now we have about us, contact us, resources, and another post right there. Let's take a look at the website now. And we have that post number four. We have resources. We have contact us and about us. I mean, we changed the title of, what, three posts in less than 20 seconds, right? Let's go ahead and add a navigation, because he's not going to want to have to scroll and click. He, he's going to want a menu with this items. All right? Uh, WP menu list. This is going to give you a list of all the menus that you have on WordPress. We don't have any right now. Let's create one. WP menu create. And I'm going to call it primary. So we do WP menu list. And now we have a menu called primary, but it hasn't been assigned to any locations, as you can see. So let's do that now, WP menu, location, assign, and then the number, the, the ID of that particular menu, which is two, and then the location defined by the theme. Um, in this case, 2017 defines a location called to top, so I'm going to use that one. Hit enter. And now if we do WP menu list, then now it's assigned to that location. All right? Um, it doesn't have any items, though. Like the items that we created, those pages that we created are not in the menu just yet. Let's go ahead and do that. We could do it manually, one by one. But if you already added, let's say, 20 or 30 pages, uh, it's just easier if we do it programmatically. And that's what the command line is for. So if I use another um, script, add menu, and I'm going to uh, pass the, um, the result of a command with WP CLI. So WP post list field equal ID. What this is going to do is that it's going to run this command uh, with the result of the post list, but only with the field IDs. Or, uh, in other words, just the IDs of those posts. It's not going to give me all the table that we've seen so far. So add menu. It's going to ask me for what menu do I want to assign this to, which is ID of two. And now it goes and retrieves every single one of those and adds it to my menu automatically for me. So if I just refresh here, now I have that navigation with all these items added to it. That honestly took like maybe seven minutes or six minutes for the whole thing. This is a full website. This guy's paying 150 bucks for this. Oh no, he offered 10 more bucks. <laughs> I mean, is this fast? Is this fast for you guys? I mean, if you guys can start with a couple of commands, immediately it's changing your life. This is powerful. 
Like you can now go from just sometimes being like, oh my gosh, I, I need to install a new WordPress website to start developing, to let me just install it right, real quick to do something, and then let me just delete it and install another one just for this, and then let me just delete that one and just use it as a tool. So WordPress becomes a tool as opposed to something that is heavy for you. Like you don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, WordPress.org. Uh, Seven million, how many, Adam, are using the website? 90 million people? 90 million people using the website, it's gonna be slow. Uh, and WordPress.org is pretty fast. But still, it's not as fast as this. All right, let's go ahead and, and uh, do one more thing. Let's take a look at plugins. WP plugin list. This is gonna give me a table that has all the plugins that are installed and active in the website. I can do the same with themes as well. Let's go ahead and remove those, the default plugins that come with WordPress. WP plugin delete and then the names of those plugins. And they're gone. WP plugin list now has nothing. Let's go ahead and install one. WP plugin WordPress SEO, which is used SEO. It goes to the repository. WP, sorry, WP plugin install WordPress SEO. And uh, this is going to go to the repository, grab the latest version of WordPress SEO, which is used, and it brings it and installs it in my uh, website, WP plugin list. It's not active. Let's go ahead and activate that, WP plugin. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you can install you know, you know, the Semper. You know, Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that uh, you shouldn't install Semper, I'm, by, by all means. You go sometimes to one, you go to another. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I know. Uh, by all means, like you can install, and this is, this is the, the beauty of this, you can go and install anything. You don't even have to have like a plugin that is in the repository. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and before I activate this plugin, Let's install one that I have in my machine, WP plugin. Actually, let's do like this. All right, let me see here. Hmm. All right. So WP plugin install, and then this is just a path to uh, a folder in my computer where I have gravity forms. It installs that package. Let's do the same with WP plugin install WP CLI, which uh, I can just do gravity CLI. All right, so same thing WP plugin install and then the path to that particular plugin. Enter and installs that plugin. WP plugin list to take a look at the, at the list. And now I have all those plugins, but they are inactive. Let's activate those. Uh, WP plugin, uh, activate. And I could go one by one, or I can just do flag all, and it activates all of them for me. So now all of them are active. Um, let's go ahead and create a form, right? Uh, because Bill is going to want a form in his contact us form in his contact us page. WP, GF for gravity forms, form list. There's no forms right now. Let's create one, GF, form create. I'm gonna give it a title of contact us and a description of uh, get in touch. That created the form. WP, GF, form, field, create. Uh, ID of one for the form in which I want to create this field for uh, is going to be of type text, first name. Let's do also a last name. Let's do of type phone, a phone number. Let's do email, of type email.
let's do text area so that they can leave some comments, which probably for Bill are not going to be nice, but comments, text area. All right, so WP, GF, form, field, list one. All right, that's a form that has first name, last name, phone, email, comments. You could, you could do it from here. I'm, I'm not going to add it here because I, I would have to install CAPTCHA, for example. Uh, yeah. uh, but you can do it from here. Let, let's go ahead and uh, add it to the Contact Us page for him. Um, WP post list. The Contact Us page is of ID 4. So WP post edit 4. This is going to open my default editor. And there it is. I'm just going to re remove all that and add just a short code, gravity form, ID of 1. Save this and go back to the website. Refresh. And now if we go to contact, there should be a form there, ready to go. Let's go ahead and submit this form. Alex Centeno phone, I'm not going to give Alex nothing to say about Bill. <laughs> Submit. Cool, that's submitted. Let's go back to the command line to take a look at the WP GF entry list one. That's what I just submitted. You can export this list if you want. So if you're into uh, having to retrieve entries in comma separated values, for example, uh, every so often from a form. So your client says, hey, I have this form. We have several clients that have like this enormous forms and they have to download them because they're, they're part of like uh, government uh, form submission. And so they have to download them. They can just leave them there. So you can just create a script and download them programmatically so you don't even have to go to the website. All of these commands that we've looked at today, they can be done over SSH as well with aliases. So you can, let's say you have 10 clients, you can create an alias for each one of them and then create an alias that represents the group of those 10. So you can say uh, plugin update for all of those websites and then you go play ball with your daughter. As opposed to having to go to one website having to, or manage WP and log in and then like select the ones. Um, the, the WP that you're using in the command line mm -hmm. is the WordPress, the WP.CLI. That's correct, WPCLI. Um, but we never installed that plugin. Correct. You, you would have to, and for, for this demonstration, I didn't install it. Uh, it's already installed in my machine. Um, to install it, it's, it's basically going to wpcli.com, um, or you can go to uh, developer.wordpresscli, like that. Here are the commands. So if you go to wordpress.org, this, this will give you all the information that you want. Uh, if you go to uh, wpcli, it will give you the steps for actually installing and, uh, um, for example, I have it in my machine, so I can install it in my machine. I don't know if you're using a Mac. Uh, uh, okay, so you can install it on your servers where you have like your client uh, WordPress installations and you can install it there. Um, I know SiteGround already has WPCLI installed on all, the, all their uh, shared hosting. So if you have SiteGround as your hosting provider, and I'm not you know, representing SiteGround, but I, I like them. They're really good, and they already include WPCLI for you. So you just, you just SSH into the server, and then you're again into the command line that looks exactly the same as this. But if you want, you can install it this way. And I believe that with the bash in the PC, you can probably do the same way. Oh. It, it's a little difficult, though. Oh, cool. Perfect. Uh, do they run in PCs or? Yes. They're for PCs? Perfect. There's three levels. I think Flywheel is completely free. Desktop servers, server press, they're friends of mine. They're a great company. We've got GW lately, it's impressed, but they're iterating. There's a free level and a paid level, a premium model. 
Awesome. awesome. Uh, Adam, do you, do you mind tweeting that so that uh, sure. someone can sure. just easily just go to that? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of command line, all the things that you would be interested with, uh, we've been developing locally in my machine. So pollen blow is just a folder inside of my machine. I can use a tarball or tar, uh, and I can create zip verbose file, a pollen blow dot tar dot gzip, and put that folder in there. So this is pretty much just zipping a, a file or a folder. So I'm just, uh, this particular kind is just a tarball zip. Uh, it goes and retrieves all those files that are in pollen blow and puts them in a tarball, which is now here. And now you move this, you copy it into your server, and then you extract it. So if you are into the practice of FTPing uh, WordPress files, which by themselves, just like moving all those files would take forever. I don't know if you've done it or if you have done it in the past, but this is a much faster way. If I can just leave you with one thing today, is that if you do it this way, you'll save, I don't even know how, how, how much time. Uh, just compressing all the files and uploading this through a tunnel in SSH, very simple, um, and uh, then uncompress it when it gets there, as opposed to just uh, moving all the files via FTP. The command is tar uh, C Z V F C stands for create uh, zip so compress it V for verbose so give me some information about what's going on and then file to give uh, a file name otherwise like it will just like give you whatever uh, random naming uh, but it's tar, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do a couple of things that would go bad uh, or really wrong in, in a website. So CD pollen blow. Uh, let's do WP DB export. And I'm going to give it a name of backup.sql. So this would be uh, exporting this database from here as opposed to having to go to my SQL or having to use. Uh, PHP my admin or going to the C panel together like just WPDB export and I'm going to give it a name of B BKP for backup.sql. Hit enter. So now if I do ls you can see that there's a backup file with my entire database there. So if you do this step before actually compressing all your tar files then uh, you will also be uploading your uh, database to the file system on the server. Let's go ahead and do something catastrophic, which is to drop the database here. So db drop. If I do this, it's going to ask me, hey, are you sure about this? This is not very normal of the command line. And I want to say that because it is a little different with a graphic interface. In graphic interface, when you do something, sometimes you get a reward. Like the system says, hey, you did great. It worked. But in the command line, it doesn't happen like that. If it works, you get nothing. It's only when there's an error that it says, hey, there was an error. I couldn't do what you wanted. But in the command line, if it works, it works. So when removing files, when dropping database, when doing stuff like that, you won't get anything, any confirmation. If you type it and you hit enter, it'll do it. But in this particular case, in WPCLI, it actually gives you a confirmation because you don't want to be doing this without knowing what you're doing. Let's and getting rid of the whole dropping thing. Your, your table. Correct. Okay. The whole database. It, it gets rid of the database even. Okay. So not just the tables, the whole thing. Okay. Let's go ahead and say yes by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> and let's call Bill. Hey, Bill, I'm done with all this stuff. I even created a contact us form for you. I did all this main menu. I did all this stuff. We're good to go. Uh, Alex, I can't see that website. What do you mean? Let me just refresh my computer here. You should be able to see it. Oh my gosh, I can't see it either. I'll call you right back. <laughs> um, this is catastrophic stuff. The reason why I went here is because there's really nothing else. Even the white screen of death is even better than this. This is the worst case scenario. All right. To come back from this would basically be, if you don't have a backup, would be 
terrifying because you have to do the whole thing again. Let's go ahead and create that again. So I'm in the installation. Let's do WP DB create. That creates the database. So that went to my SQL and created the database. And now let's go ahead and DB import the backup of the SQL. Hit enter. That imported it. And now let's go ahead and go back. So the whole website is back there. Hey, Bill, sorry about that. I didn't mean to scare you or anybody, but the website is up. This is catastrophic stuff. So it, it took like 10 seconds to get back from catastrophic. So imagine like the other stuff is like a lot easier, right? All right. So uh, I think we have a few minutes more. Uh, what I wanted to do for finishing up here was just show you some of the most common tasks that you can do with WPCLI. And to give you, you, some of you the opportunity to choose one of them that you're interested with and, and just take a look at how to do those. We already covered some of them. But if you're interested in one of them, then we can uh, take a look at, at that. So anybody wants to be billed for a moment and just ask for something? <laughs> you, all right. <laughs> you want to select one of the list here to do? Create users. Create users and admins. I'd also like to see, though, um, forms. Oh, we saw that. OK. OK, let's, let's go ahead and do create users. There we go. So those are the commands you would be using. WP user generate uh, generates users. So undefined, you can generate, let's say, 100 users without having to go and create them, just to test configurations for those. Uh, you can use create for actually creating uh, users one by one. Um, you can see user list, and you can define uh, roles with set uh, role for a particular user. Let's go ahead and take a look in the demo for that. So let's clear our screen with clear. Let's do WP user list. That is going to give us a table just like before, this time with the users that are already on the website. Let's go ahead and create one more WP user create. You haven't already created that, so I've got that. From the installation. From the, from, uh, yeah, because it's on your computer and you already have Correct. I, I already oh. have a default that I'm going to be using. Um, and we can go through the process of installing WordPress without those defaults if you want to okay. show you how to do it. But in general, I have already the defaults because they really don't change. And if it's my machine, uh, locally, I'm going to always have my name, Alex, as the username, and always the password. It's going to be difficult. So um, anyways. Uh, let's do WP user create bill. <laughs> and it says WP user create. I have to give it a user login, which I'm going to say bill. And then the user email. I'm just going to set it to andysites.com. Bill at andysites.com. Excellent. Can you give me a job? Hmm? <laughs> 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 it gave me a difficult password. All right. The cool thing is that I actually could, from here, just say, hey, send the email. So I can send you an email from here, just like you would do when you're creating one from the uh, graphic interface. Um, so WP user list should include now also Bill, which it does. Uh, but he's a subscriber. And he obviously is not going to want to be a subscriber. He wants to be the boss, right? Right, Bill? You want to be the boss? <laughs> Uh, let's do editors then. I'm not going to give you any more than WP user uh, roles. WP user. Every time that you don't remember specifically a command, you can just uh, type uh, whatever you're looking at. For example, in this case, it's user. And it gives me a list of the things that I can do. So I don't have to remember or memorize. Some of them I already know because I use it a lot. But if you don't even know them that well, just do WP user, and they'll give you the commands that you can use. All right? So um, let's do WP user. Uh, let's do set role. Uh, the user is number two, I believe. And let's do editor. That's what you want it to be. 
uh, editor. Is that going to work? Yeah. WP user list. There we go. All right. But you can I also do. Oh, cool. And so I'm supposed to remind everybody that Alex will be answering further questions over at the happiness bar by the coffee mix distribution for 15 or 20 minutes after we finish here in case anybody has additional questions or, okay. Cool. Awesome. So that was Absolutely. The whole role of MC <laughs> Just to remind them there. You know. Awesome. But I didn't think MC was one of the roles on WordPress. So. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. So, so that's how you create users. You can, again, generate users. Let's do that. WP user generate. Let's do count equal 100. That's going to take a little bit longer. WP user list. And that has 100 users. Imagine doing that by hand. It's just not going to happen. All right. Uh, anybody else? I think we have two more minutes. Two more minutes. I have a question. So could you, in theory, create a script to do a whole bunch of commands in a sequence? Yes. Uh, great question. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been doing with some of them. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at one. For example, my fresh WP. If I do which fresh WP, uh, I can go ahead and open this in my editor, which you guys already know how to do. Open T. This is my fresh WP script. All right. I have read, which is going to give me this prompt or this question. You guys saw this. What is the name that you want to use for this installation? It assigns it to a variable, in this case, WP install, and then it creates a directory with that variable, with the name that I gave. It goes into that, so it changes directory inside of that directory, and then installs WP core by downloading it first, then running config with this parameters, which is the database with the name that I gave, root, password, root user, localhost. It creates that database. And then following, it installs WordPress with the URL, .alx for Alex. And then it gives it an administrator user of Alex, email Alex at Andy sites, and then the password difficult, um, which is not that difficult if you think about it. Uh, and then uh, it gives a message, WordPress install is complete. So uh, you can create this script like all the time. You can just set like the different commands that you want over and over again, and um, create your own scripts, as opposed to having to okay, run them. So we, we could download those scripts? Yes. A couple simple ones? Yeah, I'll make them available. Uh, I'll make them available after, okay. after the talk, yeah. All right. uh, and they can serve as examples of how to, you know, how to create those scripts to begin with. Um, for example, one that is interesting could be, uh, as opposed to just doing plugin updates for all of your websites, you could create a script that first creates a backup of your uh, database. We saw the command for the backup, WPDB export, and then we saw tarball. So you can include that command tar. So it creates a, a backup also of your files. And then after that, runs the updates for all your plugins automatically. If something breaks, the white screen of death shows up then you can go back easily. Uh, the script would just do export of the database and compressing of the files, updating everything. Is everything working? And if everything's working, then you just delete everything. Otherwise, you just uh, uh, go back to, to fix it. But you created a uh, backup right before you uh, updated all your plugins. Because let's be frank, sometimes we're scared of what could happen when we update plugins, especially the more automati automated you get. Uh, it, it gets scary. This, the, the fresh WP is actually located in my path. In other words, I just need to install this 
particular script, which is a bash script. I just need to install it in one of the locations where my computer is reading those, those scripts. That's, that's all it is required. It doesn't need to be in the WPCLI directory. It doesn't have to be. Uh, in fact, it's much better if it's not in one of the installations so that I can use it all the time in different websites and different uh, installations of WordPress. One It's just, a, it's just running a sequence of WPCLI commands. But you said you can install themes. Correct. And so it shouldn't be that hard to uh, install a child theme. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Okay. No, absolutely. You can, you can create one. In fact, for example, X, which is a, a very popular framework, uh, the tradition is that you name X-child the particular um, child theme. So what you would do is just uh, download the theme, just the way that we did with plugin. You would just do wp uh, um, install the the X theme. In this case, it's not going to be available in the uh, repository, so you would have to give it a path where you download it, and then just create the X child uh, folder inside of that one. That and that's that's it. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. I appreciate you guys coming. I'm sorry. Uh, after the talk, I'll just post a, a link to my uh, to my Twitter, so you guys can just like download it from there. Yeah. What's your Twitter again? Alex underscore Centeno. That's right. Let me just go ahead and Centeno. Centeno with uh, C E N T E N O. Yeah.